Good morning, a good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another episode here from your host here at Top Tier Talk. We'll start off strong with Arsenal getting their 2 1 win over West Ham, making their fourth position very, very cushy. Chris, 3 1 over Leicester. Nice, nice, very nice for you, making sure that you're trying to catch us up for that fourth position. Um, what's it called, Amir? Not looking good for you, buddy. 1 0 against Everton. What's going on there? You need to have a real good talk about it when we get into it. Daniel. Two goals against Burnley in 86th minute. What is going on? And then Chavez will cover you in the next week because you're playing tonight against Brentford. So let's get into it. So I want to cover Amir straight away. I want to know what was going on throughout that game for 1-0 Everton to happen because when I watched that game, I thought Everton played the game of their life against you. What do you think? Well, before we do get there, I think we should bring Chavez in for the United-Chelsea game on the first day. Oh, I forgot about that. Do you want me to give you the one word review of that game? Go on, then Actually, you start. No, there's a, I can give you an essay, to be honest. No, you uh, start in there. You start. I want to hear from I, the I feel like we should, have, we should have won the game. Kai, Kai Averts had a few chances. Didn't take him. Um, obviously, Alonso was a good goal, but Cristiano, again, showing his, showing his class. Don't know half your fan base or whatever it was wanted him out at one point. <laughs> it's absolutely stupid, but... It's just a game of draws, isn't it? Us lot. I don't. <laughs> hasn't been a winner since. Do you remember when Lampard joined joined us? The four mm. 0 Yeah. What would you think? So I was going to say, it just it felt like rock bottom, didn't it? That game. I know we drew, but we didn't deserve to draw. Um, I was going to say we've had like a few rock bottoms since Fergie left. So this was a new one, but the ones we've had before, the first one I thought was in the Van Howe era. There was a winter period where we lost like a few home games in a row. I think one of them was to Norwich. Records were being broken left and right. The football was uninspiring. Um, I wanted LVG out at that point. Then uh, uh, the second one was the last few weeks of the Mourinho era. It was just toxic. I mean, there was a bad news coming out of the club every day. Mourinho was really negative in the media. And again, the football was shit. Um, the third one, obviously, Oli, uh, we lost five. We lost by five to Liverpool. Then we got schooled by City and then Watford beat us then. Um, <laughs> that felt like the third rock bottom, the end of that project, you could call it. And now, for me, this is the fourth one because the one thing, like, I think this one incorporates everything. The club is negative right now. The football is uninspiring. There is no football direction. Um, it's negative. It's toxic. And the new, I think, thing that we've unlocked is that the players don't try. They don't run. So there's no even determination anymore that some of the other teams, at least they fought for the manager. And now that's gone as well. So fourth Let me add misery. Let me add, there's another rock bottom you missed. Your man, your consultant's now half part time, isn't he? He's going to go to Austria, be the manager no, of Austria. That's so not he's that not even going to do full time. Jo- it was <laughs> yeah. never a full time job. I don't think that's that bad. Half As a consultant, he only needs to work a few days a week. He can take Austria. Does he? Yeah, that's Fair it. Enough. I mean, that's the assessment. It's of- so dead, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, to the shit game, game, isn't it? Such a poor it game was. from both United and Chelsea. Such a boring mm. game. Not the quality of Arsenal. No, the Arsenal quality is a bit shit recently as well. Yeah, Everyone's bad. Said. It's just a game of who's worse. Yeah, we, so we'll go to the, the Everton game. The Everton game. Embarrassing, were not it? Mm. <laughs> we lose a 1-0 to Everton. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not good for us right now. It's, it's a top four race, isn't it? <laughs> well, could be a top um, three in a minute. I don't know. From the start of the season when we brought Lukaku in and winning the Champions League, I was thinking title challenge, but a top four race. What's what's the progression in the league? Because last year was the same, really. I, I don't know, but Jordan Pickford turning into Lev Yashin that game, just saving everything. Time wasting as well. I'm not going to blame him. He's got to do that. Try and get the team the win. But there's nothing from us, really. Slow ball, ball, ball movement progression. Attackers not showing up. I think Kai Havertz has turned into that Ben AFC one these days, just missing the whole time. The Havertz got bullied about by Yerry Mino, I do have to say. They bullied him. Do you see the way he pushed him over? Honestly, that the yeah. feud between them two that entire game is fantastic. Mina knew exactly what he, he got was in doing. his head. Mina yeah. got in his head, definitely. 100%. I agree. And then the last 10, 15 minutes of putting balls in the box and he should, from Tuchel, he should bring on at least Lukaku for that. And him and Havertz up top, maybe try and get some balls in. But I don't know. A lot of a couple of fans these days I saw on Twitter saying it's Tuchel's job on the line. And I'm thinking, what is wrong with you guys? <laughs> the guy wants the Champions League. We're in the finals of every domestic 
tournament bar Champions League this year and you're trying to question his position at the club like I, I don't know but um, what's your thoughts going forward now then after that we have to win every game I'm, if you we carry on losing and you and Spurs Arsenal and Spurs we're shitting it if we finish fifth that's a disaster that it is, is actually disaster. a disaster yeah I don't think we, as well. no well there's five, five points from what three uh, four games if you look at the Spurs, they've still got to play Liverpool as well. So if we predict a, you never know what can happen. It's football, isn't it? But and Tottenham, we've got to play Arsenal. Arsenal so as well. Arsenal. So we've got yeah. some sort of... Which they're going to lose. Advantage, right? But <laughs> I, I don't want Arsenal finishing above us. For the whole month, Elliot had been raving about that's going to happen. And I thought he was talking absolute nonsense for the first time. It could actually happen. So, yeah, I'm, so, I'm kind of low-key, like, nervous. A bit, yeah. a yes. bit but... Getting a bit shaky. Yeah, <laughs> do you get nervous? <laughs> so, yeah, but I don't know. We've got to change. We've got to win games. I don't know it's embarrassing losing to Everton, isn't it? Really, like I, I don't know. Do you reckon? I, I want to ask though. Do you reckon that loss now against Everton? Because obviously Everton are fat fighting relegation, so they're probably yeah. they, they were more up fifth than you. But yeah, do you course. think, like, let's say for example, you went into that, like, let's say the, the players went into the dressing room after that game. Do you reckon now they're thinking, fucking hell, boys, we just lost to Everton. Like, let's actually go out their next game and fucking dominate. Do you reckon that'd be the case? Or do you reckon it's just like, oh, well, we've uh, gone uh, I hope that's the case. But if you realise a cu- half our like, back line are just already moved on or thinking of moving on. Yeah. Rudiger and Christensen are already gone. I saw Alonso and Barca are going to be talking in the summer. Mm. As P as well. I don't know. Someone said he signed a contract to Chelsea. I don't know. I didn't hear anything I, if that's true. Or I heard Barca want they did. That's another one. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's quite a few key players. George, you know, could be leaving a lot of other players. Like, I'm not going to start making excuses. Say like the whole changing of the club, the sanctions and stuff has affected this because they're they're professional players. You got to be handle themselves, yeah. Exactly, you got to be wanting to win every game. But yeah, I hope the senior players, the Thiago Silvers and stuff, will be like, come on, like wake up, what are we doing? But. Someone like Rudy was such a big character and he's already leaving as well. Maybe his head's already gone. Like, do you know what I mean? Maybe his head's not in it. He's already on holiday. Half of them are already on holiday. Yeah, they're already in Spain off and they're thinking about that beach or in Madrid or whatever, aren't they? So I do want to ask before we move on, enemy. I see you've changed your name on Zoom to uh, Callum Hudson Adoy is better than Pulley. Want to expand onto that? No, not really. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it just isn't. It's not, it's not, it's a bit of banter, but oh, okay. let's, let's hope everyone takes time. <laughs> yeah, put, me in the, put me in the doghouse a bit, Elliot. Emmy's <laughs> uh, views are, are, are his own. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, I noticed you have ball knowledge 100% as your name on Zoom. Yeah. What's that about? Can you, you elaborate? transfer that? Can you what's that about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying facts. We love that, Chris. That's you love. It. <laughs> it's the analysis. Me and Chavez will test you. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but nothing for me. We just got to win every other game now. That's it. And make sure you don't finish above us because if you do, I'll be fuming. Objective. Chris, 3-1 Hello. Leicester. Son yeah. Son is performing as he usually does. You know, what's going on? Kolovetsky is playing the assister of dreams. Explain the game for us. Sure. So, uh, yeah, so the result was 3-1 Tottenham and it was a must-win game. We had gone into the game with one point from the previous two. Not very good performances, so we had to win. Uh, I covered it in the in the preview. Leicester, the, this game for them is in between the European semi-finals against Roma, so for them it wasn't a priority. They started the match with a heavily rotated team, so this was a big opportunity for Tottenham to win the match. The match started terribly; it was really poor. Tottenham weren't, you know, playing very well, just like the previous couple of games. All of a sudden, we get a corner. Harry Kane header one nil. Leicester have got a really poor record from set pieces and Kane popped up with a goal, one nil up, and then everything's fine. We get in half time, we're not playing well. Lucas Moura started this game, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so I mentioned on this channel. And if you look back, you'll probably find clips of where I said this guy needs to be sold in the Tottenham by <laughs> sale. A big fat S next to his name for sale. And <laughs> He started the game, right? Because Sevsky's been, you know, in his position, he's taken his position. He started this game, massive opportunity for him. He let the side down once again. He was stinking the pace up. You know, you think of Lucas Moura as this, like, really technically gifted, amazing dribbler, fast. Was showing nothing. 
Kulisevsky comes on just, uh, just after half time. I think 48th minute, 50th minute. Within five minutes, he's done like three fi- things that have got the crowd off, off their teeth. You know what I mean? And he assists us the, the second goal. Really nice assist. It's just like really great composure to, to Son. It looks simple, but other players, lesser players, couldn't do it. Son gets the goal. 2-0 up all of a sudden. He does and score a banger as well. The banger for the third goal, like you say, uh, unreal goal. I mean, he's supposed to be right-footed, people say, and he just banged one in the top corner from 25, 30 yards on his left foot. He's the definition of a two-footed player. It was it was an amazing goal. Yeah. Um, unfortunately for us, 90th minute, Leicester get a goal back. Yeah, Nacho. Yeah. Disappointing not to get the clean sheet. It's a good goal as well, though. It was a decent goal. Overall, it's a great it's a great win, 3-1. You can't complain. I thought Romero in this game was immaculate. Outstanding. He was, I saw it, he was yeah. a beast. Um, uh, in the build-up to the second goal, it was his you know, tackle that, that led to the goal happening. He is he is just a Rolls-Royce of a centre-back. I, 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 I want to say, yeah, I, I have to say he is a Rolls-Royce. He's incredible. He's like, I think of like some of the best centre-backs I've seen at Tottenham, Aldevaro, Vertonghen in their prime. And I would argue he's, you know, in the last four or five months, he's been better than that. So that's how highly I rate him. And I don't know if other Tottenham fans would agree with that. Maybe a bit of recency bias, but he is incredible. And uh, yeah, this game for me, Kulisevsky, Son and Romero were all amazing. I thought Kane was a bit meh, but he scored a goal. 3-1 win. We had to win and we did. So can't complain. Um Shuts up all the, the Conte out people who say he's yeah. going to join Paris Saint-Germain and all this stuff. Uh, that that shut them up for a week. <laughs> From a Thailand perspective, uh, this week coming up is absolutely huge. Four games to go and the next one is Anfield, Liverpool way. Yeah, and, uh, okay. and after that, you know what game it is. It's the North London derby. So these two games, <laughs> we have, uh, or they will have an enormous impact on who's going to get that fourth position. So I'm really pleased we won the game. We, we, we needed some form going into these next two games. They're going to define our whole season. I know Liverpool are going for the league, but we're also going top four. It's just as important for each it's a big, team. big game, yeah. Yeah. So, just touch yeah, overall, first. overall just, great win. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, was just, I was just going to say, sorry. Um, like, um, when you, so you've got Liverpool coming up. Is, your, is that your next game? Yeah, next yeah. game. So you've got Liverpool as your next game. Obviously, you guys are going to play all your important players and go absolutely ham for that game, which understandably everyone would against Liverpool because, as, and as you said, yeah, you need it for the top four race. But as you said, now so you've got Liverpool next weekend. You're going to be absolutely gunning for that. Let's say, for example, something comes up that you might get a draw, you might get, I don't know, something happens. Then let's say you get three, four days later, you play us. Would you play that same squad? Or would you? I... They must be knackered from that Liverpool game. There's, you can argue this either way. Um, I still would play like our absolute best team in both games. I think it's too important not to. Yes. Tottenham's squad is, I've said it before, I'll say it again, at this moment in time, there's only like the, a decent first 11, maybe a couple of subs. The rest of them aren't good enough. So you can't afford to bring in Harry Winks, Lucas Moore, Davinson Sanchez. You, you don't keep the same standard. So you, for me, you've just got to play the best team for the next four games. I understand what you're saying, though, about do you rotate? Because there was an interesting stat. Like, when we were playing a lot more games earlier on in the season, like three games a week, let's say, um, the drop-off in results in the midweek match or or the three games a week versus, like, just, you know, normal one game each weekend was enormous. So there's an argument either way, but it's so important. I would stick with the same same best 11. Kulisevsky just was on the bench as well, so he's going to be a bit more fresh. So, yeah. True. It'll just be a tough game for both of you because as you said you're going to exhaust yourself against Liverpool and then bang straight back into a North London derby but it's exciting it is exciting the very month of May eh? <laughs> See that? Daniel Burns before I move on to Arsenal I want to move on to you you're on winning 1-0 on the complete one deal. opposite end of the spectrum to exciting yeah. 83rd minute all of a sudden it just goes down the path. give him one minute one minute we're done no, no, not yet. I'll, I'll milk, I'll milk <laughs> this until. But the, the championship season starts before the Prem, so I'll be living off that. Um, what happened? Uh, Watford happened. Uh, is, is the simple answer. Um, first goal winning. Looked at me, Dad. 
I'm I went, yeah, Burnley are winning this game because it's it's so obvious. It happens every single week. Um but on, on, on the plus side, we are now record holders. We are the first Premier League team to lose eleven consecutive home games. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> so, Christ. So we are now record holders. We are on the current worst run of form in the Premier League. We've lost the most games this season. Um, um, positives from the game. Um, we might win some games next season. Um, we completed four nutmegs, which means we need to do two next week to hold the record. You decent can see weather how, that day. Yeah, yeah de- decent weather, to be fair. Um, got to go to football in shorts for the first time in a while. Um uh, that's about it. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> what did you have at half time, Dan? Uh, I didn't. I sat there in my seat going, We're winning a football match. What is going on? Could have <laughs> didn't even do that. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even we didn't even get it done. Um, it seems you're relegated now, Dan. It's pretty self It's pretty you're one point ahead of like uh, Norwich. Norwich are already relegated, but it's literally the case where Burnley or Everton have to lose. Every single one of their games now for the rest of the season, and you have to win. Yeah, so so you'll probably remember that I said we a couple of weeks ago we had we play to play Burnley, um, Brentford. Leeds, Brentford, Brentford, and we've got Everton to play next week. So had we have even got something out of those games, uh, of the tables in front of me now, had we have beaten Leeds and uh, Burnley, which again the Leeds game was a complete right. Yeah, it would have been games for you though. But they, they should well they should be winnable games is the issue but they're not um I, I, I don't but just, I'll, we'll go back to that in a second so we would have been on 28 as ifs and buts Leeds would have been on 31 Burnley would have been on 31 with Everton on 32 so it's literally it would have been points in it um but again that's just by the by that's ifs and buts we're Watford we don't we don't win games of football um but I was talking to my dad earlier I was talking about football and stuff and, and I was like even last time out when we got relegated um we you could see that we could win games like again it, it was it was an anomaly, but the Liverpool game, or like we'd actually won games of football before that. Uh, this season, I we don't look like we, you, know, you look come to the Southampton game, the away game when we, when we won two one. Even at two 0 up, you're thinking every time the ball goes in the box, we're like we're looking like we're going to concede it. Mm-hmm. It's just like I, I said, I said a couple of weeks. Ago, uh, I don't know if it was on here or whether it was to you lot. I was like, I can't see us winning another game this season, and and since then we haven't won a game. So it's it's, curse. <laughs> it's, yes, it's the Nigerian curse, but it's uh, it's fine. They didn't qualify for the World Cup, so have that. Dan, um, just to weigh in here, like, you make a really good point with the last time you got relegated because it went to the final game of the season, wasn't it, against yeah. Arsenal? And like, that was season... unlucky. We could have got something out of that. Exactly. But... Yeah, but um, what we, you're right, it's the manner this time, isn't it? It's like already defeated. You could kind of tell yeah. from beforehand. It as wasn't... soon as that first goal goes in, yeah, we've lost the game. As soon as we concede. It just seems your head's drop. As soon as that one goal goes in, you're like, oh, again. Do you know what I mean? And then you're going to have to keep their formation. But, but it's, it's weird. So I get a championship. But sort of when we finished, when the Dini goal happened the season after, we finished up 14th in the champ. Um, and it was, it, was a, it was a running joke across that whole season. We'd be 2 up and we'd throw a game and we'd lose 4-2. And it was like, oh, we're 2-0 up. We still need two or three more goals to win the game. And it's almost like this season. Like, oh, yeah, we don't score a lot of goals. It's like we'll be winning a game. We'll concede and we're like, yeah, game's done, we're losing. Because it, it happened the week before against Brentford as well, the last home game, sorry, against Brentford. You, you, you're in the game. We, we, we weren't winning the game. We come back to one or but we was on top for a good 20 minutes, half hour. And then it's like, oh, well, you know what's happening. We ain't scoring. They're, 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 they're going to score. It's just blatantly obvious. Dan, I'm going to ask you a really, really tough question. I know you probably got to think a lot about this, but like, what factors do you think of like, played in for this season you've just been so poor and like obviously oh, to you. what were sort of like factors from well, your... he's taking a drink of water now Look, you've got him started yeah, yeah <laughs> so got, like, got what, what sort top. of things would you say like um, complete and utter negligence from the board mm-hmm. um, um, partly the players but it's also uh, again something I've mentioned many a time before trying the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity where you get relegated with the defence you get promoted and you you try and stay up with the same defence well we've conceded the third most goals in the league behind Leeds and Norwich but but is is it the same defence sorry to interrupt like you've got Kamara's you've got Samir's etc yeah so I know two out of the four uh, yeah so we started with Kiko and Agaki I was there last time out yeah Um, 
he, he, he's going back to, he's going to America. Good riddance. Leave. Okay. Really? Uh, yeah. That's Foster. Um, yeah, uh, you can see he's getting on now. Um, um, but even before we signed what Kamara was a January signing. That's how good he's been that you've actually mentioned him. Like yeah. he was a January signing. We had Adam Messina and Danny Rose, but Danny Rose is crap at football. So we so we Tell me about we, it. We, we we were stuck with Messina for and again someone someone that played two three years ago in the Prem, and it's like the team that we got relegated with was actually a, a good football. Like, it was the team we got to the FA Cup final with and finished like ninth. Uh, no, sorry, eleventh with the season before. Like it wasn't a bad team. Yeah. It's just it was just one of them things, and then obviously the players were too good to play in the championship, and they just left. You can't blame them for that. Um, but yeah, going no, on that, yeah. can I go say on. something? Going on yeah, that yeah, go point on. Um, about the team Watford got relegated with versus this team, it had like okay, Dini wasn't playing every game, but still he right. was a pretty good player. You had Delafeu, the Corey, Capu, um, Herrera, Hughes. Herrera. But then yeah. every single one of those players I just mentioned, maybe minus Dini, who's just gotten a bit older. Would comfortably yeah. start for this Watford team, but, right? But you, like, you look that... at Delafeu, Del he's he's tearing up against Syria, but he scored again at the weekend. Herrera <laughs> got an assist. Capu, UCL yeah. semi final. Hughes, it took him a while, but he's now starting for Palace. The Corey, he's down, he's down, he's down, he's down he has been there. injured. He was, he played but, well, but that's what he did for us. Yeah, he's, he's played all right, but it's what he did for us when we got relegated. He, um, any any snip of a relegation battle, he just down tools. That was it for him. He had a good, he had a good six, eight months, and then that was that was it. That's all we got for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just but... like just the the decline in the team when you think of that decore capu midfield partnership that was like a just, really just Sissoko solid... and Kuchka. yeah it's now regressed to Sizoko and kushka or whatever right and you go through all the positions yeah. and it's got worse for me that yeah. lies with the recruitment like yeah. oh yeah okay. that's what i said it's, it's the negligence from the board it's just it's just pure stupidity yeah. when we got i approached i said it last week or week before when we got relegated they released a massive statement saying it's on us. We're sorry. We've we'll learned from our mistakes. We'll move from this. Well, obviously, we want for the best for the club. We own it. We want it to be where it deserves to be in the Premier League. Which, again, as a fan, we don't deserve to be in the Premier League. You need to earn to be there. And this season, we haven't been. But I appreciate the sentiment and the statement behind it. Um, they did. They did fulfill then, that promise. Then, they did, you did get re- promoted. Yeah, but this is the issue. But again, we got promoted in a weak championship. Uh, a very, very, very weak. And we struggled. We struggled to get promoted in the weak championship. Um, and then summer comes around and we sign a few players. But again, the issue is the defence. And the, the issue has been the defence for as long as I can remember. Um, and yeah, so then before the Norwich game, as I said, when, they, when, when we spoke about the Norwich game, they released a whole statement going, oh, we need the fans. It's a massive six-pointer, whatever, whatever. We turned up, they didn't. And the Suzuka comes out on Friday. I think it was Friday. It might be Thursday or Friday, whenever his pre-match interview was. Uh, and was like, it's another massive six-pointer. We need you. And then again, we turn up, they don't. And Scott Ducks, we programmed notes. We're like, oh, this bit of disappointment from start to finish this season is on us. We'll learn from our mistakes. And it's like, you've just, you've just rehashed the same words from two years ago and you still haven't learned, which is why yeah. I had so much an issue with them. And it's like, if you're going to yeah. do something, at least, at least act upon it. As I said last week, I'll bring it again, last week, week before, he said those words and they've put those words into action at Udinese, not at Watford. Right, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, I feel, I feel like some, lose some. We need to have a whole right, video on the whole thing. We, 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 yeah, we, we, we lose some and we lose some and draw some every so often. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Well, moving on to a little bit of more happiness now. 2 1 win over the old Hammers. Love to see it at their ground as well. I mean, you must be a little bit disappointed yourself. But listen. <laughs> listen. I, I, do you know what? From that game, um, it's a classic kind of performance. There wasn't, it wasn't like a good, it wasn't like a bad. It was just like a, it just, it was just here. It was like you have, you know, your, how do I explain it? It's like your bog kind of Arsenal performance. It's what we needed in order to secure three points. It wasn't like an outstanding bosh. Do you know what I mean? Like we did against Chelsea. It wasn't like something like that. It was just your bog Arsenal performance. You weren't astounding against us, though. It was just defensive errors. Just have to get oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that's what it's I'm saying, though. Like, yeah, but it was like a bog, it was a bog Arsenal performance against West Ham, and we managed to secure three points against West Ham, and it was really good. Like, there wasn't... Like, everyone had played their part, everyone done their job, and it was perfect, you know? Three... Uh, two goals from, like, crosses. Can't complain. Two centre-backs with goals. 
nothing more, nothing more you can do, really. And Ketia is absolutely running his socks on sock talk. He's given Laka a run for his money. I've said it week in, week out. I'd love it to see it. It's absolute dedication from that boy. And you love to see it because he's given, like, our recruitment a run for their money. He's thinking, he's saying to him, like, choose me as your striker, you know? Like, why not? Because if you're, if you're giving him, like, this time and money into him and, like, give him this, like, the, what's it called, the uh, appearances in the Premier League to do it, and he's doing it, you know, he's, he's proving the point as to why he should be playing for us. I don't see a problem. But obviously, Rob Holden's first goal in the Premier League, love to see it. Nice, cheeky little header. I don't know why Lanzini was a marking him. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, explain it. But and then Martinelli with cheeky cross into uh, Gabriel at the back post. Can't complain. Three points at the bag. Um, as I said, like with this as well, Chris. I was hoping obviously Leicester could get a little bit of a cheese um, <laughs> draw out of you because Leicester be a Leicester, they'll manage to turn up against other big six teams and just get a point mm. out of them somehow. You didn't. You managed to beat them. Fair play. Um, Chelsea dropping points against Everton was a bit nice for us because now we're three points behind you now obviously goal difference is a big factor as well but um, yeah obviously just from that game like it's as I said it's like your average kind of 3.2 point wins but I'm more focused purely on the, these next games now because this weekend now we've got beads and we can't do what we did against like a Brighton and Southampton where we kind of drop off and say it's only them no we need to focus purely on these games now because as you, as you saw previously when we played these Brightons and Southamptons we just dropped off and lost and those are crucial, crucial points. Like, if we won those games, Brighton and Southampton, we'd be above Chelsea right now. We'd be third. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, the one game, obviously, I stand by the fact that we should have 100% deserved to lose against for the Crystal Palace. They ran us off the park. But Brighton and Southampton, games we need to be winning. But Leeds, like I said, if we p- perform perform against them really well, because is it, is it our ground? I think it... No, it's at their ground. It is. It's, it's at your... Is it our, it's ground? our ground? Yeah, yeah. Emirates. That's not too bad then. Yeah, that's pretty good because... I'll give us a little boost as well, because then hopefully we'll go into that game with that same that same exact team as well. I hope Tomiyasu is okay from when he like had a little bit of a calf problem when Cedric came on at the end. I hope he's okay because that's his comeback <laughs> we're in. I hope not. But um, yeah, look, not one fault. El Nelly bossing it in the midfield. He has an uh, he's had abs- absolutely outstanding games against Chelsea United and now West Ham. No faults with that guy. I'm loving the fact that Xhaka ran the armband again. Love to see it. And yeah. You know, moving moving on to Leeds, it'll be a uh, <clears throat> an important game for us, but it's not as important as you, Chris. That'll be a tough game for against you for Liverpool. Uh, Chelsea playing Wolves, I believe, which is another tough game for them because Wolves are currently seventh, I believe, just behind. Yeah, every, every game's tough, isn't it? In the Prem, really. Hey, but really like, I'm, you're judging based on where they are in the league. Apart from what for the Man United. <laughs> out of our three games all of us here like me Chris and uh, Amir our, our game is the hopefully what you think is the easiest leads I don't, you know? I don't agree with that you really you, you, can never un- you can never underestimate a team that's no 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 I'm not underestimating but on paper no, of course of course on paper, okay on saying, paper player for player okay yeah you're yeah right. on paper we should be like the most likely to win that game out of all three of us uh, it's going to be a very, very tough game for Spurs. It's going to be a, a reasonably tough game for you, uh, Chelsea fans, as well, because you're going into that, what was it, based on a loss, a draw, and a loss again, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a loss, yeah, because you lost against us, drew against United, and lost against Everton, so... It'd be worth standing between that, that but yeah, you're right. It yeah. is exciting, because then we've got, as you said, Chris, the North London derby on the 12th of May, which, uh, again, is a big There's game, a way, because yeah. I, I, I always think, I still stand by um, whoever wins that game will come in fourth. It's massive. Just the, the momentum of it as well. Can I just make a point, Earl, about Arsenal and, and Arteta? Yeah, so, three games ago, right, Arsenal had lost three in a row against all teams like mid-table Box. teams. They were Box, all expected yeah. to win. Uh, Palace, Brighton, Sampton, right? Mm-hmm. In those games, they lost um, Thomas Partey and they'd lost Tierney. Like, they got injured at various points. Yeah. They go into the Chelsea game, three defeats in a row, few players injured. Morales down a bit. Morales down. Tottenham have got the momentum at that point, and they beat Chelsea, Man United, at theirs, at the West bridge. Ham. Yeah, yeah, and um, two of those three games away from home. I think you know Arsenal and Arteta deserve a lot of credit for that. Yeah. Everything was against them. You looked at the fixtures and thought, oh, you know, Arsenal blown it. Tottenham will win their game, whatever, right? But then you know <laughs> Arsenal stepped up, as you say, Al Nini stepped up. Yeah. Kitty has stepped up. No, no, Tavares, all those questions about how he was 
terrible and he couldn't even get in the team when he's the only fit left back. And now he played pretty well, I thought, last couple it of was, games. Yeah, yeah. He was a bit, bit of an well, average, right? your average kind of yeah. performer, yeah. You see at the weekend holding, scoring a goal. Yeah. Like all these like, man of the match performance, love it. Squad players, right, yeah. for Arsenal have come in and done really well. That's like for me, that's really impressive. For, yeah. from our team, team spirit in it, Chris. It's team spirit, like right? I yeah, guess. I'm honestly I'm a Tottenham fan, but I'm being honest. Like that's to me that's really it's, yeah. The English media doesn't really like Arsenal that much. You'll love to see if we if we go ahead and lose against Leeds, you'll see every single like the sun snapping it up. The Daily Mirror they'll be like Arsenal bottling their fourth position just because we lost. Do you know what I mean like? But if we win a game like we won against Chelsea, you don't see they're like oh I don't want to get Chelsea. That's it. There's no like oh wow well done that you beat the champions of Europe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's none of that. No. And also, we're uh, very much criticised. Yeah, you are. It, it isn't honestly. It isn't fair sometimes. Every club gets you know that, but particularly they, them and you're not, them get the most. So they're like still like yeah. a sigma of a banter club. They haven't really been that much of a banter club this season. I'm just exactly. being honest. Played well. Most. I was time. just gonna say. Um, so this weekend, as you say, uh, we we got we're at Anfield, and you got a uh, on on paper at least more winning. On paper, game. yeah, that's what I'm saying. On paper, yeah. If we lose, like. Probably should, you know, all things considered. And if you win, like you probably should. Okay, it's the Premier League, it never works out that way. You'll be five points ahead. Okay, yeah. going into the North London Derby, but three games to go, five points ahead. We can talk mm-hmm. about who, who could win the North London Derby. At that point, Tottenham would have to win the North London Derby. That's yeah, a lot of pressure, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and Arsenal would have, I hate to say this, the the chance to, if they win, they would like guarantee their top four at Tottenham. Like, you know, so th- that's not inconceivable. That would be an absolute nightmare scenario from my perspective. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, all that's got to happen is Arsenal beat Leeds, Liverpool beat Tottenham. And then that's one win away from happening. So, yeah. It's exciting to see. The very month of May. It's making me realise how it's, big it's, that it's, game really is, isn't it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's not huge. Chris, it's not quite winning the league at White Hart Lane, though, is it? Ah, oh, uh, boy, up. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> but when you consider Arsenal being out of the Champions League for... Three, four, five years. Yeah, since I think like uh, 2018, 2017. Yeah, Tottenham have not been in the Champions League since uh, two years ago, three seasons poor ago. Guy. Poor guy, was, was in Europe this season. How'd that turn out? <laughs> yeah, so like this is a big game, you know, and, and also the, the ramifications of, um, you know, if Tottenham don't get it, will Conte leave, will Kane leave? If yeah. Arsenal don't get it, will someone there? Yeah, exactly. It's big ifs. It's big ifs big if on what happens, isn't it? Yeah, but so it's, like, it's also it's on the game. flip side. If yeah. if Tottenham win, on the flip side to that, that again has has not even affects either of your clubs. It's, it essentially hands City the title. Yeah, yeah, there's so many like different factors, isn't it? There's there so is. Many... It's, that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's an exciting. It's exciting. The league's been really weeks. good this season. Yeah, just to, like, yeah. You got the you got the, the, the relegation battles. There's the, no like set team. position. Yeah, but there's so yeah, much it's, like. It's great how you know. When you think of the title isn't decided, top four isn't decided, relegation isn't decided. Like with four games to go, normally at least two of, of those three are already done. Like yeah. last season, Man, uh, Man City have walked the league and yeah. uh, things were decided, right? That's but what I'm saying, yeah, exactly. Much better. I agree. I do agree. Chavez, I'd love to cover you, but you're playing tonight at eight o'clock against Brentford. Ronaldo's any any, uh, any like leaked highlights, uh, leaked uh, lineups or anything like that coming into the game, Chavez? Anything you want to quickly add? Well, um, I would love to see if a few youngsters play. We've got one of the best youngsters in world football sitting in Don't the Charlie Patino. No, we've got Ganacho. Um, just keep an eye. Who's that? A Nacho. And why did you say uh, Ronaldo's oh, last game at Old Trafford? Do you know? Yes, this is right? Ronaldo's last game at Old Trafford. People why need to stop that? denying the truth. It, it just is. Well, where's he's he not, going then? He's not playing Europa League this season, shut up, lads. So he's going to Arsenal? He's going Bayern Munich or going back to Real Madrid. Chavez, I do recall um, last season, just, just for some context, Juventus were fifth in the Serie A and eventually they got fourth. But I remember reading at the time that if Juventus had come fifth and not got Champions League, Ronaldo was like 100% going to leave. Uh, because you know they were saying for the CR7 brand he can't play Europa League or even yeah no, he can't. He's, he's do you think that's the game. same case this season or because he's a little bit he's older? A bit older yeah, exactly. Right. What do you think? Thing is, Bayern Munich were ready to take him. Like I, I thought at one point of the season he was playing quite badly. He was off form, but he's brought himself back unbelievably. But at that point, I thought maybe no one will take him. But now, I think Bayern will take him, even Real Madrid if they. If, if Lewandowski Bayern. goes, for example, that could be exactly. Yeah. Lev is not certain on staying at. PSG nah, maybe well. what, do you, what do you boys think about the probability of Ronaldo going to PSG so we get Ronaldo, Neymar, Messi? No. 
Cool for FIFA, yeah. but that's it, really. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It'd be nice to see like the momento, wouldn't it? Them two play together, but uh, see Ronaldo and Messi play together would be a dream. And it would, we know it? PSG would put the money up, no problem, right? Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. It would be nice. Whether it would be nice. Actually, whether it would actually you know work and be successful it, it is one question. But because, you, know, because, a, then, because you might see Mbappe leave to Real Madrid, so you never know. It would just you know, be pure vibes. Ronaldo and Messi. I mean, vibes. Vibes. I'd watch them games all the time. Game, so. Yeah, exactly. No UCL just vibes. Just fine. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't do anything that too. Who would take it the would pens? Who would take the pens in that? Pessi or Pernaldo? Kim Pembe. Sick him on Bruno it. Fernandes would still somehow find the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Chris, we will move on to your predictions. Sure. So I'll start with Chavez. Why not? So I'm going to read out the 10 games and one by one, you give me the, the outcome. So first of all, Brentford v Southampton. Draw, nothing to add. Draw. Burnley v Aston Villa. Burnley are not winning four Premier League matches in a row. Villa win. Uh, I say draw. Chelsea, Chelsea v Wolves. Oh, oh, it's just me, Chief. Uh, okay. <laughs> let's, 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 start let's, let's start again. Let's start again. Ruining my All right, so I will read out the 10 Premier League fixtures and you give me the outcome. Chavez, Brentford v Southampton. Uh, draw. Burnley v Aston Villa. As I said, they're not winning four Premier League matches in a row, Burnley, so Villa win. Chelsea Wolves. Chelsea. Crystal Palace versus Watford. So we're sitting with the Watford fans in the away end in that game. So just for my heart, I really hope Watford wins. So I'll go Watford. Brighton v Manchester United. Brighton are probably on better form than United. So they're probably the favourites. But I reckon we'll shock a few and get a draw. Liverpool versus Tottenham Hotspur. Liverpool. Norwich West Ham. West Ham. Leicester versus Everton. Tied legs for Leicester. I'm going to go Everton win. Arsenal versus Leeds. Leeds are shocking, but they're fighting for their lives. Oh, this is a tough one. I'm going to give it up to Arsenal. Very close, though. And lastly, Manchester City versus Newcastle. Okay, this is, this is a shambles. This is where I'm actually really worried about Man City. I think Man City are going to draw points this game. I'm going to go draw. <laughs> Controversial. Let us know what you think. For the 10 games this weekend. So, Elliot, uh, your turn for the 10 outcomes of this week's Premier League matches. So, to start with, Brentford versus Southampton. Brentford win. Burnley versus Aston Villa. Draw. Chelsea versus Wolves. Draw. Crystal Palace versus Watford. Crystal Palace. Brighton versus Manchester United. Manchester United. Liverpool versus Tottenham. Liverpool. Norwich versus West Ham. West Ham. Leicester Everton. Everton. Arsenal versus Leeds. Arsenal. And lastly, Manchester City versus Newcastle. Man City. Lovely stuff, El. Thank you Short very much. Sweet. Daniel Brand, Mr. Watford. Let's start with apparently <laughs> Brentford versus Southampton. Uh, Brentford, Burnley versus Aston Villa. Burnley, Chelsea versus Wolves. Draw Crystal Palace versus your team, Watford. We've got a win at some point, Watford. Brighton versus Manchester United. Uh, United, Liverpool versus Tottenham. Liverpool, Norwich versus West Ham. Norwich are down, so I reckon they'll, uh, they'll play without pressure. So Norwich. Leicester versus Everton. Uh, my heart wants a Leicester win, so Leicester. Arsenal versus Leeds. Arsenal. And Manchester City versus Newcastle. City. And finally, oh, not finally, <laughs> second to last, Amir. Um, yes, let's go. Brentford versus Southampton. Brentford. Burnley versus Aston Villa. Villa. Your team Chelsea at home to Wolves. Chelsea win. Crystal Palace versus Watford. Palace. Brighton versus Manchester United. Draw. Liverpool versus Tottenham. Liverpool. Norwich versus West Ham. West Ham. Leicester versus Everton. Draw. Arsenal versus Leeds. Leeds. 
And Manchester City versus Newcastle. Man City. Thank you very much. And uh, last person, so Christopher. Brentford, Hello. Southampton. Brentford. Burnley Villa. Burnley. Chelsea Wolves. Chelsea. Palace Watford. Draw. Brighton United. Brighton. Liverpool Tottenham. The mighty Tottenham Hotspur. Why well, Anfield? Okay. Norwich West Ham. Norwich. Leicester Everton. Everton. Arsenal Leeds. Arsenal. City Newcastle. Man City. Cool. Simple as that. Simple as that. Simple Leeds are not winning, Amir. <laughs> what? Why are you Leeds not winning? <laughs> I don't decide it. <laughs> See how your, your team, your players play. <laughs> oh, the uh, uh taking a break. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everyone. Please subscribe. Look into our TikTok because we're starting to get a bit famous. No, we're not, but, you know, <laughs> still looking. And stay tuned for more. Thank you.